I'm going to kind of give you the background of why that's important because some of the myths are, it, you know, it takes more energy to make alcohol than you get out. That's a common myth. The other one is, oh, no, we don't have enough land. We could never grow enough crops to make alcohol. And the other big myth is, isn't it immoral to grow crops for your SUV and let the starving hordes of Africa starve? In other words, you know, a food versus fuel issue. Those are core propaganda issues about alcohol, and I'm going to want to I'm going to go and make sure I get some of those covered, you know, early on in this thing. We'll get into some of the practical stuff about crops, and as a sideline to that, because it's going to be related. So let's start with the energy balance question. How much energy does it take to make alcohol? If you listen to the popular press. And I think last Sunday there was three oil company executives on the air, and they were talking about, oh, yes, alcohol takes more oil to make than you get out. Of course you can't make enough. It's basically a hippie thing. And, uh, you know, it doesn't amount to it. Um, how many people here have heard that it takes more energy to make alcohol than you get out of it? Look at this. Look at this. How many people have heard that? That is an amazing example of the American Petroleum Institute. Because you don't even know where you heard that. But you know it. It's been said so many times that you've internalized it. And you're going to be surprised to learn that all of this information about energy balance comes from one man, David Pimentel. And he's like a perfect, a perfect front man for, for the oil companies. David Pimentel, Cornell University. I mean, he's a ecologist, of, you know, but his actual, his actual field is entomology. And he's done brilliant papers on organic agriculture and bug control. But in 1980, he went way outside of his field and did a paper on the energy balance for alcohol fuel. And he did it on, under the Carter administration just before they were finishing uh, the Energy Research Advisory Board. And the head of the study was himself, and Paul Weiss, who was head of research for Mobile Oil. They were the, the two guys that were in charge of the study. But what David Pimentel did not tell the Department of Energy is that he was also on the payroll of Mobile Oil when he did the study. And he came out with the conclusion that basically you put in 70% more petroleum energy than you get out as energy in the fuel and so you might as well, you know, every gallon of alcohol you make just makes the problem worse. Okay, so that's that's where the myth started. Yeah. Was that at one dollar a gallon or three dollars a gallon? Had nothing to do with price. It had to do with energy. In other words, it took more energy to make it, so it was like basically a scam that farmers were getting away with. Yada yada. And this got repeated over and over and over again. Well, those of you who are old enough might remember Jack Anderson, who was the muckraking reporter from the Washington Post, and he. He found out that David Pimentel, when he wrote this story, was on the payroll of Mobile Oil, and he published that. And then, get this, this is so priceless. Mobile Oil took out full-page ads in all the big newspapers, chewing out Jack Anderson for daring to question the credibility of David Pimentel simply because he was on the payroll of Mobile Oil. A scientist is a scientist, and they always do the objective thing. And it's like, how stupid do they think we are, you know? So, so uh, back at that time, George McGovern actually convened a Senate hearing on this, this finding by the Inter Energy Research Advisory Report, and they basically exposed the whole thing as a scam. What was David Pimentel's solution to the energy problem? We should make fuel from coal. Gee, by a process called the Mobile M process, which just happened to benefit the people he was working for. So, you know, that was the, the benefit of the study. Now, ever since then, he periodically publishes re-examinations re, uh, re of his paper. The last two came in 2003 and 2005. And every time he does, the American Petroleum Institute printing presses and now email machine goes into action, and every single press source in the United States gets a copy of the conclusion of this guy's study. So in the scientific community for 20 years, he's been a laughingstock. But the public keeps hearing the conclusions over and over again. 
And you've, you've seen this already in other fields. For instance, there's five scientists that still say that global warming is a theory and that it's not proven. And there's 6,000 that have signed on saying it's definitely real. But whenever there's a newspaper article, they always quote one of the five for balance. Okay? Well, whenever you talk about alcohol, they always quote David Pimentel for balance. He's the, he's the one. Okay? So I'll give you an example of what's wrong with the study. I'm not going to dwell on him too long because he's such a sad case, but he's done so much damage to the, the movement. One of the things that Pimentel says is that his study is better than other studies about alcohol is that he includes the energy that goes into making the tractor that farms the corn. Now, of course, when you talk about petroleum, does he factor in you know, tankers and pipelines and all that? No, no, that's different. But when it comes to farming, he says you've got to figure in the tractor. And he put in this figure, basically, and this figure has hardly changed over 25 years, which is suspicious in itself, that there's 49 pounds of tractor, steel and rubber, per acre that you've got to factor in when you make alcohol. Now, if you're an academic, this is just a number, okay? I mean, this, you don't know what to do with this if you're an academic of the energy field because he didn't publish any of his assumptions. Like, where did he get this number from? And, for, and finally, after 25 years, he finally has been, you know, called out enough times in this that he actually put the assumptions in his 2005 paper, which will be the last paper he ever writes on the subject, especially when my book comes out. So at 49 pounds of tractor per acre, he basically, his assumptions finally put in writing were that a tractor has a 10-year life. He certainly isn't a farmer because the average life of a tractor in the United States is 25.7 years. But let's just go with his 10-year life. And um, he said it was a 20,000-pound tractor, 10-ton tractor, and it was a 20,000-pound harvester, which, of course, is only used a few hours a year and on a lot of acreage. So I'm a farmer, and I finally get this data and I do the math, 49 you know, pounds, 10-year life, 20,000 tractor, and even with his numbers, the farm size comes out to 81 acres. Now, to put that in perspective, the average corn operation in the Midwest is 1,000 acres. But that alone wouldn't damn him. Because all the academics who've ever criticized him weren't farmers, they didn't look at this number as anything other than a number. But I'm a farmer. I know what the size tractor this thing is. I can, I can plant 81 acres of corn with this, with this tractor in four hours. This is a huge tractor. Okay? And so it's a completely bogus number. He's taken a tractor that can actually farm 2,000 acres and attributes all the energy to 81 acres, you know. And, of course, if you go ahead and actually put the real life of the tractor, you'd have to make it about 40 acres because it actually lasts 20 years. And then, you, nowadays, tractors don't even have tires anymore. They have treads, which use much less rubber, and so basically it gets down to about 30 acres. You know, what it gets down to is that basically he's off by a factor of thousands, you know, three orders of magnitude. So that's just one example of... What he, does, what he did in his studies all this time is by m monkeying with the assumptions, he could make the statistics come out any way he wanted. And nobody in academia had the experience in the field to catch him at it. He must have been laughing for the last 25 years at all these guys. So 